Hi everyone, it's Richard McMahon and in this video I'm going to give you a great tutorial on how to pass mechanical aptitude tests. This kind of test is used in many practical type jobs like the military, the armed forces, uh, being a train driver, um, an engineer, loads of different jobs like that. So if you need to undertake any kind of mechanical aptitude test, this video is going to help you. I'm going to give you some sample questions, some answers. I'm going to give you some questions to try and I'd like to test your knowledge um, and see what you like at mechanical comprehension. Then at some stage during the video, I'm going to give you free access to a guide that you can download and accelerate your learning even further. So let's get into the questions. Question number one. Now, if cog X, that's the one to the left, turns clockwise, which way will Y turn? So we need to look at X and that's going to turn clockwise. Now, many people are not sure what the difference is between clockwise and and anti-clockwise. So let's just do a quick tutorial before we come on to this. And the best way to learn clockwise versus anti-clockwise is to just picture a clock and think which way the hands turn. Now the hands turn that way, which is clockwise. And if it goes anti-clockwise, then they're going the other way. So if you are unsure about clockwise versus anti-clockwise, then just picture a clock and clockwise is the way the hands will turn and anti-clockwise is obviously the other way around. So let's go back to the question. Number one, if X turns clockwise, which way will Y turn? So X, that's turning that way. And alternating cogs, like the second one, will understandably go anti-clockwise. The next one will go clockwise, so therefore Y will go anti-clockwise. Really easy to answer once you understand clockwise and anti-clockwise. And also, providing there's only one cog assigned to it, if one turns one way, the other's going to go the other way. OK, so you can work out that kind of question relatively quickly. So question number two, you guys, I want you to have a go at this and answer this yourself. If cog B, the one, the large one to the right, turns anti-clockwise, which way will cog A turn? So put your answer to question two in the comment section below the video, please. Um, as we go through these questions, if you need to pause the video to take a bit of time to answer them, please feel free to do so. But don't forget to put your comments um, your answers in the comments section below the video. So if cog B turns anti-clockwise, which way will cog A turn? Please put your answer below. Okay, next one. Which of the pendulums will swing at the fastest speed? So if you think of like an old grandfather clock, and below it is a pendulum, which helps the clock um, to rotate and to go around and to operate, which of the pendulums out of A, B, C, D, and E will swing at the fastest speed? Now there's one simple rule with pendulums, and that is the higher up the bar is, the faster it will swing. Okay, so if some of you are thinking, which, what am I talking about with regards to bar? These are all the bars. Okay, and the one at the highest next to the actual pendulum and the round circle part will be the one that goes fastest. So the answer is, of course, D. Okay, so that's the one that will swing at the fastest speed. Question number four, which cog will make the most turns or the most number of turns in 30 seconds. Now, the, the, the time limit here is largely irrelevant. They're basically saying to you which cog will make the most turns in a given time period, and it is B. And the answer is because the smallest cog will make the most turns in a given time period, because it's smaller. And if you've got cogs in this kind of question that are similar in size, and one looks maybe that it's smaller, just count the number of teeth. OK, just quickly count the number of teeth on the cogs in the smallest one will spin the most turns in a given time period. Question five. Now, this is a tough one that I want you guys to have a go at. At what point would you need to place the weight X, which is on the right, in order for the scales to balance? Is it A, B, or C? So we want the scale to balance with Z. Um, put your answer to question five in the comments section below the video. Now, of course, the clever ones amongst you are going to say to me, yeah, but Richard, we don't know the weight of them. OK, but what I'm saying to you in this question is X weighs more than Z. OK, so that's how to answer the question. Please, at what point would you need to place weight X, at A, B or C for the scales to balance X weighs more? That's the only clue I'm going to give you. OK, number six, how many switches need to be closed to light up one bulb? OK, so we just want to light up one bulb. So we've got the circuit here going all the way around. If I close one switch there, we're still not going to be able to make the circuit because the other three are open. Therefore, just to get one light bulb to actually open and op to operate, we need to close two. OK, and actually, if we do close two, we will get two light bulbs. So if I close the top one 
and the bottom one, then we'll get the top and bottom light lights that will come on. Question seven is a trickier one, getting more in depth now. If bar X moves to the left, which is that way, which way will bar Y at the uh, bar Y at the bottom move? So if X is going to the left, then we can work out that the large cog that's attached to it will go anti-clockwise, which means the one next to it will go clockwise, the next one anti-clockwise, that one will go obviously clockwise and therefore y will also move to the left okay so you just need to be able to practice these and i'll tell you where you can practice them in a second loads of these questions in your head question eight i want you to have a go at this one please this mechanical aptitude test question which of the shelves can carry the heaviest load is it a or is it b tricky one which of the shelves can carry the heaviest load okay a or b Question nine, if water was poured in at point Z, which tube would overfill first? Now, because Y is at a lower point than X, therefore, the water would overflow there first of all. Question 10, which rope, A, B or C, would be easiest to pull the weight over with? Now, with regards to this, it all depends on the distance away from the rope, but also the height above the load. Generally, the higher above the load that the weight that the line is, it's easier to pull over. So the answer there is A. With this kind of question, it very much depends on the distance as well. Um, how far you've got from where the rope is and the distance across. So if A was down here, say close, that wouldn't be easy. But because they're equidistant across, the one that's highest up is easier to pull the load over with. Question 11, I want you to have a go at this. If cog 4 turns anti-clockwise, which other cogs will also turn anti-clockwise? So is it cog 1 only, cogs 1 and 3, cog 3 only, or cogs 2 and 3? Okay, so cog 4 is there. If this turns anti-clockwise, you know which way that is now, which other cogs will also turn anti-clockwise. Please put your answer to question 11 in the comments section below the video, please. Finally, another question for you more tricky one. Again, I want you to have a go at this, please. In order to be safe, this ladder needs to be pitched a third of the working height away from the building. If the building is 30 meters tall and the working height is 21 meters, at what distance away from the building will the ladder need to be pitched? Is it A, 7 meters, B, 10 meters, C, 14 meters, D, 3 meters, or E, 9 meters? Please, Put your answer to question 12 in the comment section below the video and I will mark it for you. Um, okay, so what I want to do is give you more of these kind of questions because I'm sure you're enjoying them. Um, so if you click the link right now below the video, you can get a free download guide which is about mechanical aptitude tests and also about mechanical comprehension, mechanical advantage. I'll, I'll teach you loads of different tips on how to pass these kind of tests and give you some sample test questions. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I'd appreciate that. Say hi in the comments box and give me all your answers to your questions. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll send you more, um, more of these videos as well so you get notified. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best in your pursuit to passing your mechanical aptitude test.